What if I told you that the very rockets that took America to the moon, symbols of freedom and human achievement, were designed by scientists who, just years earlier, had built devastating weapons for Nazi Germany? It sounds like fiction, but it's a documented, controversial chapter of American history called Operation Paperclip. How did this happen? And why did the U.S. government secretly bring over 1,600 German scientists, technicians, and engineers, some with deeply troubling pasts, onto American soil? Today, we're diving into the shadows of post-World War II geopolitics to uncover the story of Operation Paperclip. We'll explore why the U.S. felt this drastic measure was necessary, introduce some of the key figures involved, and grapple with the complex, ethical questions that still surround it. The year is 1945. World War II has ended in Europe. Nazi Germany lies in ruins, defeated. But amidst the rubble, the Allied powers, the US, Britain, France, and the Soviet Union discovered something astonishing. German technology was, in some areas, years ahead of its time. Jet aircraft, guided missiles, advanced submarines, breakthroughs in medicine and chemical engineering. It was a technological treasure trove. But this discovery sparked a new, silent conflict. The wartime alliance between the West and the Soviet Union was already fracturing. A new rivalry was brewing, the Cold War. Both sides knew that the German scientists behind these innovations held the keys to future military and technological dominance. The fear was palpable. What if the other side got them first? For the United States, letting Soviet Russia acquire this brain power was unthinkable. President Truman authorized a secret program, initially called Operation Overcast, later renamed Operation Paperclip. The official goal, exploit German science for American benefit and crucially, deny it to the Soviets. The paperclips themselves referred to how the dossiers of scientists selected for recruitment were flagged in US personnel files. Operation Paperclip targeted specialists across numerous fields, aerodynamics, rocketry, medicine, materials science, electronics. The U.S. military and intelligence agencies actively sought out individuals whose knowledge could give America an edge. They weren't just looking for blueprints. They wanted the minds that could innovate further. The most famous and controversial figure brought over was Werner von Braun, Gather round while I sing you of Werner von Braun, a man whose allegiance is ruled by expedience. Call him a Nazi, he won't even frown. Nazi schmazi, says Werner von Braun. Don't say that he's hypocritical. Say rather that he's apolitical. Once the rockets are up, who cares where they come down? <laughs> That's not my department, says Werner von Braun. <laughs> A brilliant rocket engineer, von Braun was the technical director behind the V-2 missile, the world's first long-range guided ballistic missile. These weapons terrorized London and Antwerp. Crucially, the V-2s were built using forced labor from concentration camps under horrific conditions where thousands died. Von Braun's exact level of awareness and culpability remains debated, but the connection is undeniable. Yet, in America, Von Braun became the father of the U.S. space program, leading the team that developed the Saturn V rocket, which propelled Apollo astronauts to the moon. But Von Braun wasn't alone. There was Kurt DeBoos, another V-2 veteran who became NASA's first launch director at Kennedy Space Center. There was Hubertus Strughold, often called the father of space medicine, whose wartime research at Luftwaffe facilities allegedly involved horrific experiments 
on Dachau concentration camp inmates. Dr. Strughold, what are the prospects for space travel? Will not only make routine flight under space conditions in the vicinity of the Earth, but also that he will travel to or around the moon. Though he was later cleared by U.S. authorities, controversy remains. Arthur Rudolph, the project director for the mighty Saturn V, later surrendered his U.S. citizenship and returned to Germany after investigations into his role using slave labor at the Mittelwerk factory. These scientists brought invaluable expertise that accelerated American progress in rocketry, jet technology, medicine, and more. They contributed significantly to the space race, military advancements, and even consumer technology. But many carried the heavy baggage of their past service to the Third Reich. This is where Operation Paperclip becomes deeply unsettling. To get these scientists into the U.S., officials often had to bypass standard immigration laws and security protocols. Some actively worked to downplay or outright conceal the Nazi affiliations and potential war crimes involvement of certain individuals. Dossiers were allegedly altered, records lost, and past allegiances conveniently overlooked. The justification was national security. The perceived threat from the Soviet Union was deemed so great that securing German expertise was paramount, even if it meant recruiting individuals who had actively participated in or benefited from the Nazi regime's atrocities. It was a calculated gamble, a pragmatic, some would say cynical, decision where the perceived needs of the future outweighed the demands of justice for the past. Was it right? Could the U.S. have achieved the same technological success without them? Did the ends, winning the space race, maintaining a military edge during the Cold War, justify the means of recruiting individuals potentially tainted by war crimes and overlooking their service to a genocidal regime? There are no easy answers, and historians and ethicists continue to debate this uncomfortable legacy. It forces us to ask hard questions about morality, necessity, and the compromises nations make in the name of security. Operation Paperclip undeniably shaped the 20th century. It fueled American technological supremacy during the Cold War, directly led to the triumph of the Apollo program and laid the groundwork for countless scientific advancements we rely on today. The knowledge brought over was transformative, but it came at a moral cost. It involved secrecy, manipulation, and the uncomfortable truth that America knowingly employed individuals who had served a regime responsible for unimaginable horrors. Operation Paperclip serves as a stark reminder that history is rarely black and white, it's a complex tapestry woven with threads of brilliance, ambition, fear, and moral compromise. Understanding it means acknowledging both the incredible scientific leaps it enabled and the dark shadows it carried. What do you think about Operation Paperclip? Was it a necessary evil in the face of the Cold War or an unforgivable moral lapse? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you found this video informative, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more deep dives into fascinating and complex history. Thanks for watching.